next thing you know, um, she's uh, got studio time booked. And we're like, whoa, whoa, wait, man, we're not ready to do this. She's all, yeah, the studio time's booked, get ready. So she booked studio. Good manager. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. I liked her. She did a good job. She liked you, man. R.I.P. my love. Yeah, man. yeah, and God bless her. Unfortunately. Um, but, um, so yeah, so she books the Studio D, which is like, man, like, pretty nice place right and it costs however much man for 24 hours sure and so she gets uh her friend uh paul zoll who was a drummer in um a band called svt kind of a a, remember svt yeah man Mm -hmm. jack cassidy the bass player from the jefferson airplane was his band they opened up like when i went and saw like pat travers a couple of times yeah like the opener exactly and they were kind of this sort of like kind of edgy punky thing yeah because jack cassidy wanted to do something kind of new wavy after Uh being in this hippy dippy right right you know band like the airplane you know and so paul was a great drummer and um so paul the drummer from that band and he played in a band called yanks as well um, he ended up producing our album. So we had a drummer produce the album, which Luke Bowman was thrilled about, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. They must have spent so much time getting all the tones. To all the drum- yeah, everything was spent on getting drum tones, and that's why we went to Studio D, because they had great drum sound. So we go in there. Everybody used Studio D. Yeah, and it was like, Lori goes, well, you got we got the place for 24 hours, so go as fast as you can, right? And so uh, we set up drum tones, recorded most most everything within about 16 hours so we just dropped we couldn't go any further right and everybody's fried carl was at, had to stay up till four five six in the morning doing vocals because you know he's the last guy to, to do anything i know this you, you know how it goes everybody spends all this time on guitars and yeah, solos the, the vocals down yeah hurry up zet Zet. hurry up zet you got about three days to exactly. do, the vocals, zet. do them all yeah. get them done zet three songs a day shouldn't be a problem you can do three or four a day right but if anybody could do it, you could do it. I do do it actually like that. I'm actually, you know, I'm yeah, very proud. I know how you are, dude. Everybody says that. No so. nonsense. No nonsense. But uh, so so Carl's like that. So then we do the album, we drop, then we go do some overdubs um, a few days later in another studio, mix it. So the album's, the whole album done, recording, <coughs> mixed, mixed in like 30 hours, you know. And songs are kind of a little faster than, you know, because we're excited and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, it would have been great to have more time and you always could have got that much more better but uh better of an album but i always look back at it like that though right it was great man and we came out we Lori got like three thousand copies made or something she sent it to every college radio station across the country man Uh, what year is this now this is 85 85 85. she's sending it to everybody she's sending it to uh every fanzine in europe she's mailing every isn't it run fight for your life right yeah fight for your life's opening track song called wasteland was there a name for the record no it's just ruffians it's just ruffians yeah title and then uh yes because that was the opening track fight for your fight life, for your life. Right? yeah fight with your wife fight with your wife oh we had those too. yeah <laughs> believe me we're excellent had we had to, yeah 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 a lot of yeah but um so yeah man the album comes out and uh then Lori gets it um licensed with um SPV Steam Hammer, mm-hmm. which was great for us, man, because that was huge uh, label in Europe. They're still around. Yeah, they're, they're still, still around. Records, they, and they got still... the album everywhere in Europe. Yeah, and um, so the every the fanzines, the press is coming in, man, and uh, and it's getting good reviews. And and you know, we, the, our influences were, you know, the we wore influences on our sleeve. The band was we, you know, like Iron Maiden, man. We liked uh, we liked. Um, uh, Judas Priest. We liked uh, Deep Purple. We like Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush. We Let, like. I want. I want to talk about and, that because you. You. Uh, your band came out in in, in an era, or a, or or a land where thrash metal was God, and and unfortunately, I mean, there was bands like yourself and Y and T and and vain yeah and 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 um 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 well yt ahead. being being uh, another sort of uh, a generation before I understand yeah, that, yeah. but still the musical i think the musical um um influences was definitely there if i listen right. to that the you know especially the five to the six songs I can hear leopard in there. I can hear that. I hear scorpions in right. there. I hear so many. Some except you get some heavier, yeah, some, some kind no, no. of stuff like it that. Wasn't, you, know? I could, you can't. You can't say it was like hair metal. It was like the Bay Area's version of new wave of British heavy metal to me. You know, that's what, what I mean? it, yeah, that's what it is. It was, I, and, and I mean, if I look, because again, I said the last couple of days I've been listening to it because I, you know, I knew we were going to do this interview and I wanted to get re. And it's some of the stuff is like, man. It's you can so hear the great influences in there. Do you think that, you know, 
you kind of got swallowed into the area of thrashness. Oh, for kinda. sure. I mean, for sure. Talk about that, Craig. For you know? sure, man. And I get I get asked that all the time. And like, you know, eight out of ten interviews that I do, you know, that gets brought up. And um, yeah, you know, I think the thrash kind of started like I would say eighty four. The bands around here. I would here. say yeah, it yeah. started to cook cause because because Legacy was eighty. 84. Late 83, 84 is when we started playing really shows. Really writing yes. songs, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, we were like um, influenced by all those bands I mentioned earlier, sure. right? Sure, yeah, and Michael, so, I mean, yeah. you know, come on. And um, then Lizzie, Nazareth, And you I know, think some of the UFO, bands, like, of course, we you know, all were. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, Forbidden and bands like, some of the bands like that, you know, uh, or um, I can't even think right now, but uh, those bands kind of i think they like the iron maidens and the dios too sure so, sure but they weren't into maybe the deep purple well no. i don't know as much as the mantra and stuff like that so they were kind of taken i think that's how kind of thrash you know they 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 heard bands like accept and metallica yeah yeah no, exodus exactly, exactly exodus that's exactly what they heard and let's and just I, be I, honest man when i when i when the word thrash comes up i mean uh, uh, the equal sign goes to Exodus. That's what well, I think, I, I, dude. Because, see, I mean, but for me, who was not in the band in the beginning, so I can be very, you know, objective about this. I was in the outside looking in when I seen Bailoff, and to me, that was like, I, I always explain it like this. So, Zet, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to go see Exomess. Exomess. And they're like, you mean Exodus? I'm like, no, Exomess. Because what's going to happen in there tonight is going to be a fucking full on mess. And so to me, it was more brutal than anything ever, even more brutal than Slayer when Suicidal came up oh, to play. Sure. It was just more brutal. Exodus was violence. I mean, I was like, I remember the first time I heard fucking the song Exodus, I'm like, did he just say kick in your face and rape and murder your wife? I'm like, who the fuck writes songs like that? You know what I mean? Bailoff does. Bailoff does. <laughs> of course he does. So to me, it was like this Exodus was this whole other level. But, you know, like I said, I mean, you guys were looped in with Armored Saint, you know? Yeah, yeah that, that type sort of, of thing. So going back just to kind of wrap that up, I think, um, you know, we were just doing our thing, man. I just doing what came honest to us. And, and uh, we already put out our own album out. And, you know, I was talking to a few people like, you know, metal blade and stuff like that a lot. And, you know, I even was, was asked like, you know, Hey man, you got to write songs more like this and this and this. And, you know, we had some heavy stuff, but I wasn't going to get, you know, just write something, uh, along the thrash vein or just because someone told me to, you know, I mean, I like, well, it wasn't what you guys were doing. We're we're doing right. Exactly. And and so that's why we still played and we still did our thing. And you know, what's great. And, but, but then we, we, we broke up earlier than all the bands did too, man. Like, you know, the band broke up in like 88, late 88 or something like that. Or mid 88, I think. Some bands violence didn't even have their, or forbidden hadn't even put their first record out yet. Right. Yeah. So, So, but the whole wave changed in that. Do you think that you guys broke up because of that, of, of that whole thing or, you know, was I, any- I don't think that was like, the, you know, like the nail in the coffin or anything. I think that, yeah, we definitely got kind of swept under because, you know, we we're just doing because our thing, you man. Were in, you were, yeah, exactly. Hey, dude, and the- it wasn't the thing that was necessarily, it seemed like people don't understand that in areas of the United States and the world, there were regions right. like in LA was very heavily for guitar or hair metal in that respect. They knew that, you know, San Francisco and like New York and right. Chicago, they had like heavier bands like E Trope and, and 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 Overkill and Anthrax sure. and, and the and 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 uh and the Cro Mags and the Crumb Suckers and all this type of you know DRI, hardcore, DRI, stuff. hardcore yeah, crossover. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um do you think it kind of got you know, it was it like got it, lost, man. It got it, buried it a little bit. It, it got, really got swept did. under the rug a little bit. And we had a few strike against us with, uh, you know, Carl left later on. To, Talk about that. Yeah, Talk about he Carl left to go uh, with Vicious Rumors, man. Right. Vicious Rumors, they got signed Atlantic, dude. You know, and uh, and then once, you know. That, That's an amazing record, yeah, by yeah. the way. I, I love and, that Well, album. I think even before that, though, before they got signed Atlantic, uh, Carl did an album with them. So, but, um, but they were a great band, man. And uh, so the opportunity was there for him. He went to Vicious Rumors. 
and uh, we ended up getting rich. Which is wild, he's, he's amazing, amazing singer. I, I love. Fuck. I mean, I love good singers, man. I mean, I, I like. I, I, I like and playing. Right, yeah, you, it wasn't yeah, like yeah. me. I, I make this cool <laughs> sound that matches the music that I play, and that's what's cool yeah. about it. If you ask me to have to go sing for the ruffians, <laughs> I'd fall flat on my fucking face. Sorry, I just and I appreciate the shit out of those singers because I can't sing like that. I mean, you know, I would love to sing like old school Dawkins or. You know, like that. Or, I mean, I could try. I, I don't think it would Hey, man, we yet. all got to think, dude, what you do night after night, I mean, you're like a Dan McCafferty uh, from, from Nazareth of metal. I mean, Time you that. sound like you got, you, you, you're you waking up and you're drinking, you know. Uh, Gargling glass. Yeah, right. And uh, so, yeah, it's pretty wild. So, well, I, you know, I, I mean, and you know, it's funny is I just did, uh, we did, well, not just did in December, we had to do a tour with Death Angel and Sodom and it was 17 shows back to back. Yeah, dude, how do, you, how, how do you, I mean, you're, you're a warrior. Sleep, sleep, <laughs> sleep, yeah. uh, no booze, you right, know right, what I mean? right. just keep your shit straight, you know, diet and the whole thing. It's actually gotten easier as I've gotten older because it's more technique now. Yeah, yeah, technique. You, you learn how to sing. Like, I didn't know what back in Fabulous Disaster. Right. Plus, how's that sound? Does that sound good? Oh, I'm almost blown here, but it sounds it sounds long as it sounds good. You know what I mean? Who knew? Yeah. And as you get older, you learn the value of sleep, like oh, you sleep. said. Dude. Sleep is yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Back then sleep was like, what? It's like, what day is it? What do you mean yeah. what day is it? We're on tour every nice Friday night, right? Right? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. But it's my like, but my admiration for for you know, you guys, man, Exodus, bands like Death Angel and and, and, and are just going out and playing night after night like that, man. I mean, that's something else, man. As we're as we're this age. Yeah, you know. As we're this age. I think but then it's in your DNA. You, you guys you've been doing it for so long. That it's because it's, it's what you what do. We are. It's what, it's what you we do. Are. You know. Well, and it's what you are too. Yeah. yeah. Because you're, you know, you. We're, and we're going to talk about your, uh, your cover band in a minute. But um, I want to talk about um, going from Carl to Rich. Yeah. And 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 um, and, and the stuff that Rich did was just like fucking awesome. Yeah. I love I love this to hear the song that he sang, and um, we have to tell the. The chicken story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The chicken, well, okay. The chicken story has to be told. I'll set it. I'll this. set it up, and you'll come in with the punchline. Okay. So we had a studio, right? That that warehouse, the Emeryville warehouse, and it was a. Uh, uh, it was oh man, we had the beautiful rehearsal room. It was like well, your side was. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, 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 it was like when I say beautiful. <laughs> No, your side was beautiful when you guys got the uh, the the capital deal with all the marshals oh, and all oh. the brand new like no, there was I'm like talking about there was twenty clean like it was this warehouse right and it was when I joined Exodus they shared with, the, with Ruffian, ruffians ruffians had one side of the room and, and, Exodus had the other the bikes are all set up there's a whiteboard set everything's level Exodus side beer bottles crap shit lift over hanging off I mean it was like pig pen clean pig pen right. Yeah. And so um, I, Paul actually, when I was hired in the band, Paul was living at that studio and then he actually continued to live there. And um, Right. Because I was the landlord of that room, right? I was the guy that right. had to collect the, the money oh, I remember, and, and, and like gotcha. go pay Poor the guy. Bounce. Well, you at least it, you had Tony to deal with. Yeah, yeah. So. so I dealt with Tony and got the money from Tony. And um, yeah, so I'd go, oh. uh, yeah, so I'd go, go pay oh, the guy. God. So I was kind of the landlord. So that the cleaning thing, that was probably like my landlord coming out. Oh, try to keep it clean. Let's let you know. And uh, But no, there's definitely times it just, the, the room would look like that on our sometimes, but we just clean it up before the end of the night. We didn't. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, it I just got spilled into you guys our- are People would animals. use stuff as shit, you know what I mean? It was like the clean, cool band that has their shit together. The band that's <laughs> fucking, like I said, it's Pig Pen and Charlie Brown. It was night and day, man. Uh, <sighs> but you guys are killing it, man. So, so you continue know. with the so Tell them the chicken. Yeah, this so, is so yeah, yeah. This well, is, um, this is typical Bayloff right here. Well, um. Yeah, so vintage bail. Well, I told Tony, I says like, well, no one can live in the studio, man, because like no one's supposed to live there. It's just for like you know bands and people that run their businesses. So uh, and if we do, man, the, the studio is going to get jeopardized. They'll kick us out in the room, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And so sure enough, I'd come in the room sometimes and like you know whatever, go change my tubes in my Marshall or some shit, and uh, Bailoff would be there sleeping. <laughs> And I'd be like, oh, no. Hey, what's up, Bay? Hey, man. Hey, Craig. And hey, so, Craig. And I didn't hey, want to. Voice. Yeah, hey, yeah. So I, I said, oh, Bay, you know, you're not supposed to live. And he goes, oh, man. But, you know, I don't have a place to live right now. I said, all right, Bay. So I'd have to go tell Tony, you know, 
you know, blah, 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 and, and so all this sort of stuff. And then, uh, and I think Rich, man, he was living, our singer was living in a camper outside the place. Yes, but he wasn't yeah. staying inside. He was the inside, the place. but he would come in there. So him and Bailoff would hang out a lot. Yeah, God knows what kind of drugs those guys are doing, man. I can but, imagine. Uh, uh, but yeah, so then, yeah. Uh, yeah, so what happened? I think. Well, so <laughs> I came to, I remember now, I joined the band now. And so Paul was still, you know, living at the studio that Exodus rehearses in. That was kind of so weird. It was. So it was, well, they, they, at least he was, you know, gone every time I came there to rehearse. And even so, Paul and I, there was no animosity towards us. It wasn't my decision. It was theirs. You know sure. what I mean? So, and we kind of kept cool. And every time we played, we always invited Bay up to sing one with, there was no bad blood at all. People tried to create that, obviously. It was the natural progression but, for but everything. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I guess... We came in to play, uh, to rehearse, and Rich was up there, and somehow he left. To, he left right, and 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 because you know we were going to practice. I don't know if he went in his trailer or whatever. And he had some food there. He had like it wasn't even a bucket of chicken. It was fucking the little Kentucky Fried Chicken thing. Probably had maybe three or four pieces. The three piece so, meal. The, it had the fucking uh, mashed potatoes, the coleslaw, the biscuit, the whole thing. So. I know it was there because when we went in there to practice, somebody made a comment about it. They're like, ooh, look. And look, there's fucking somebody left some chicken here. Like, somebody said, don't. That's the, the singer for the ruffians. That's his food. <laughs> and so we kind of respected it, you know, which, well, we did respect it. And so the next day, I find out that after we had practiced, we all left. Bailoff came back. And there was nobody there, but there was this fucking three-piece meal <laughs> sitting there. So Bailoff ate it all. So Exodus kind of still ate the chicken, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, ba- yeah. It <laughs> by indirectly, it by, is- I, by, I guess by extension, we did. But uh, I heard about it, and then I heard Rich was pissed. Oh, dude, I'm sure. He, dude, he probably, fucking, did. He probably he went to fucking the- blew it. I heard when he threw it. <laughs> A gasket. I don't know if the, I wasn't there, <laughs> but we were coming back to rehearse again, and he had went oh. off on Rick and get, and because he, he didn't realize that Bailoff had been the one there, and, but we knew because and and then Paul admitted it. You know, he was, sure. You know, he didn't know I ate the chicken. I, was, I ate the chicken. I was hungry. I was sitting there. You know, so it's a matter of a survival. Like, exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was it was survival of the Bailoff of the fittest, <laughs> and so I remember that, and it was just so Exodus, and we talked about. Ruffians are going to kick us out of the studio. Eventually, we're going to lose the studio because we are just pressing the fucking... <laughs> we play where we're later than we're supposed to. We're way too loud. Look at our side. We don't use a garbage can. It's just, you know, there's weed things. and There's a fucking mirror out with yeah. remnants on it. You know what I mean? You know us. So it was like, shit, you look, turn around. Ruffians... Nice, cool stage to practice on. Shit all taped out. We would just, amps all fucking we'd just clean our mirror and put it yeah, underneath it, the well, amp. Well, at least they were clean <laughs> about it. We weren't. So I don't remember how long more we stayed there. But that area is all, you know. Yeah, we, for a while, we, I mean, it was great because I would stay sometimes and watch some uh, a couple songs of your guys and then split. Right, because we played sometimes and, right after you Yeah, guys. right afterwards. Yeah. And then, Those um, were the days when we played every single day. And then, it, uh, kids. You guys got all, yeah, we, we were practicing four nights and a week. Fucking dude. right. Yeah, fucking yeah, we, that's I, what, that was our, what we did. We had two stacks. I had two stacks. Uh Chris had two stacks. SVTs on side. We plug. We plug into all the caps. You guys, after you got that, got all those marshals for the got the capital deal. There, capital there, deal. there was like three stacks on each side. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Robbie had like four. you know four SVT cabinets. Four SVT yeah, cabinets. Plug into. Johnny every- was on a fucking riser that was yeah, yeah. built on fucking. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the chicken. Right. We're talking about the chicken. So uh, Rich comes in and uh, blows up because Exodus ate his chicken, but it was really Bailoff. Well, it. it, it Bailoff will always be Exodus, regardless of it. There, even when I was in the band, you know, and not in the band, Bailoff was Exodus. You know what sure, I mean? Sure. It's just the way it is. It's like a Paul. I look at it that way. It's too. like a Paul Diano to Bruce Dickinson I, thing. I, I like, look yeah, at it like that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the era. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, but uh, with Rob as well. I don't. I look at Rob's just. You know, that was when Rob played was a singer for Exodus. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, I look at it like that. But this was back in the day where. 
every man for himself. You know what I mean? Jeff Andrews is still Exodus. Oh, I, I would think so. <laughs> it, Jeff it, Andrews is very Exodus. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Kirk Hammett is still very it's Exodus. Very Exodus. The first time uh, I saw Exodus was when I was in Laws. We played Alvarado Park in Richmond. Uh-huh. And um, Tom was the singer. Yeah, wasn't that Gary's first gig or something like that? It could have been. Um, yeah, and then they built a stage, and then we played. I'm and, sure they did. And there was like the the you know dirty bathroom that we went and changed into our spandex and all that stuff that looked like the Scorpions. And then we came out in the park and we right, played. Right. And uh, yeah, and uh, Tom sang. It was like uh, Whipping Queen and uh, uh, what other songs was. Uh, they did Running Free, Maiden, and did. stuff like that. And then, uh, and then that was when they got bail off after that, yeah. Kind yeah, and from what I understood that he could afford to buy the PA. That's why kind of he, he was into it. He knew everybody. Yeah, and he, sure. And he says, I'll buy, the, I'll buy a PA. Right. And that's how he kind of got in. That's right. what I was told. So. Yeah, um, yeah cause he was good friends with Mark Whitaker. And Mark Whitaker became the manager because Mark Whitaker right. saw big things for Exodus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then... He knew got kind of got bail off and you know and the right. band introduced him and uh, yeah I I remember being uh, in a guitar well one of these places in the San Francisco like guitar showcase or something like that I already knew Kirk at that point right and uh, so I, I ran into him and Kirk had his eye on this Explorer this um, Hamer uh, checkered like Rick Nielsen black and white checker guitar he's all oh, dude check out this car it's pretty cool everybody's kind of getting hot on hammers a little bit at that time they were because uh, yeah, Pete yeah. Willis played them yeah yeah like right right I, I, Glenn Tipton yeah, they, yeah. They, they played hammers so he had his eye on it it, it it didn't suit him I don't think he never never bought it but then he's all he's all hey man he goes you know Paul Bailoff right I go yeah yeah I know I know Paul and he goes yeah dude we're gonna try him out for a singer man and I go really I said well if Paul could sing, I mean, I, I, I never knew it, I said, but I said, he sure knows his metal, man. I said, you know, and, and he's got the passion and the attitude. That's so what he had. The passion and the attitude. So uh, next thing you know, uh, yeah, he gets the gig. Yeah, <laughs> so that's he, awesome. It's kind that's, of wild. That's, 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 uh, uh, and, and he was the man for days. Yeah, yeah. For days. I mean, and he's still the man. He is yeah. still the man. But, uh, but That's yeah. wild. That is, that's a good one. But you have because I didn't meet him until, you know, I started going to the shows in Exodus. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, and started to see him. And then I met him. Like I remember one time, I was like, "Oh, there's the singer for Exodus." Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Hey, dude, what's up? Right. Hey, guy. He's like, "Hey, man, what's up?" Yeah. Like, you don't remember your name, you know? Uh, unless you were somebody. You know, sure. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. What's up? Right. With that bass, bass sound. Uh, I was raging with Bailoff back before he's, you know, singing all this. So stuff. when hey, you was good, good now, times. when you ended um, Ruffians. Craig, you did you do another band? You did another band. Um, after that, um, you know, I started. Uh, I didn't start. The band was already going. Um, control. Right. Control. Yeah. 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 So uh, a friend of mine, Phil, had this band, Control. Um, they hadn't played out or anything. Um, he had all the songs. And uh, Phil was friends with Mike Coons, and Mike was still in Laws. So, um, and Mike, what year is this about? This is, this is about eighty nine, probably uh -huh. eighty nine. Yeah, somewhere around there, ninety ish. And uh, Mike goes, "Oh, dude, Phil's got this band. It sounds just like ACDC. It's a hoot, man. These lyrics that he's writing are just—I mean, they're comical, but they're, it's great, man. Good time." So he goes, "You got to come down, right?" And uh, and uh check it out so so sure enough i went down there and uh, i'm like yeah any chance to be malcolm young yeah sign me up I right yeah yeah well, and uh so uh control was a band we played out like at morty's we played the stone played the omni um you know all those places and uh yeah it was a good time it was i was ready to kind of do i mean my roots were like you know in the montrose and aerosmith and the and the stuff i was kind of ready to go rock guy again you know at that uh -huh. point and so which you are right now definitely yeah you know it's in, it's in my blood but um so yeah control was a fun band and now was uh, mike still singing with laws at that time he was and so, so he, he was double duty then, he was double duty and, and then so uh then when laws would like you know he, they got a tour. They were gone for a long time. Then we got another singer, uh -huh. and which was, you know, which was great. The guy, guy was great. But it, I mean, how I, long did you go? I miss my buddy, man. Being right. a coon, sure. being a, being a band with coons. How long? How long were you guys? That band going? went for a couple of years, man. Um, and 
yeah, all the recordings were like top notch, high fidelity stuff. And so Phil, the guitar player, he was talking to Johnny Z a lot from uh, you know Megaforce, Megaforce. Uh-huh. and uh, Johnny loved the stuff. He loved it. He goes, man, he goes, this is just a hoot. This is fucking great. And uh, because, man, you guys just sound too much like ACDC. I just, I, I can't do it, man. And like, you know, and he's already had a genre that he was pushing, sure, you know. Sure, And so. Um, it would have been too blatant. Right, right. So um, at the, um, Mike uh, uh, was saying, yeah, he's telling me all this sort of stuff. And I remember when we went and saw you play, it was that um, Headbangers Ball tour with, um, uh, was it Exodus? Anthrax and Halloween. As Exodus, Anthrax, Halloween. And as you guys played the Oakland Auditorium. Right. And so right before Anthrax came on, they played a song called Baby Rack My Balls, which was a control song. And they cranked it over the PA because Johnny had hit some of the guys, the Anthrax, in this demo. It was like, check this out, man. These guys' lyrics are like, we had songs. So the sound man was playing it. Yeah, yeah. So we had songs like Shaking the Snake, Baby Rack My Balls. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I mean, ain't no last call for alcohol. So it was a hoot. And, uh, and so they played it over the PA, me and Mike were at the show together oh this is great man you know <laughs> but he won't sign us but it'll play us over the pa before no, anthrax goes on was getting into it this, that's why yeah yeah he yeah. turned it on to him he turned it on to him i think yeah you guys are playing a lot of different stuff uh, you know between the bands but yeah it was kind of neat <laughs> it's kind of cool when you're at a gig and you all of a sudden you're hey that that's us yeah, i remember the last time the first time somebody played legacy at, at something you know what yeah. i mean it was like a legacy we always had a show and and somebody played a song off the demo it was probably like an exodus or something like and I was all of a sudden, like the stone sold out. And right. All of a sudden, the song comes on. It's Raging Waters or something. I was like, I'm, I'm, listen, man, that's me up there. You know, it's like, now it's like, oh, whatever. You know, raging, I mean, raging, raging waters. waters. <laughs> and um, yeah, was that demo one or two? Demo one. Never, demo. There was never a demo two. Oh, two okay, okay. It was just a demo, demo one. one. I remember the demo because that's because that's right. Uh, Alexis. Sk- 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 Your got- sister had a lot to do with uh, guiding alexis in the right direction to do things you know we we went to prairie sun to record that demo i mean every time i talk to alexis about something he's like you know i need to talk to laurie Bearhurst first and because you know laurie's kind of like my mentor and telling me what to do it's like you know i gotta get alexis on there there you go Walt. yeah, Here's yeah. alexis I There's love Alexis, man. He's still a good friend of mine. And uh, yeah, Lori and him were tight. He was, uh, she was kind of like a little, uh, uh, he was a little brother figure yes, to her. Very another much another so. little brother. And, but on the, well, man- like she said, she knew how to attack things. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> us as kids playing music that all we did is we're watching and listening to records of our heroes and copying them. Sure. We don't know the business. Yeah. We don't know how to book a gig. Yeah, right. We don't know how to go do a demo. Yeah. We don't know <laughs> who to call. Who to call. Yeah. We don't know what, what, what to deal. We just did sure. that. But that was the first. That was when I first met you. Was you in right. your legacy? Yes. And then speaking of um, Lori and Alexis, here's a flyer I found. Here's, Look at that. Here's, yes. Uh, can you see that? Ruffians. So legacy. Ruffians legacy at the Stone. That was was what do we say? Eighty four. I'm gonna maybe? say eighty four. Eighty four. Maybe eighty five. Maybe. Maybe early. Maybe. Know, but no, I'm gonna say eighty four. And so. Um, and so this show happened because of Lori and Alexis. Of right, course. right, right, right. <laughs> Shoot, both the I'm managers. Gonna do, we're going to do a show with Breathians. And, and artwork uh, by Mark DeVito. Mark DeVito, of course. Right, and who yes. was another, uh, he did all our flyers. Oh, he just did the, he well, did, he did the two Hatriot records for me. Yeah, yeah. Did did the uh, Ruffians logo. He drew these, uh, uh, what, Rick Griffin inspired uh, <laughs> the eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. It was like eyeballs on acid or something like that. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, man. Amazing cool. shit. So we've known each other for 35 That's years, amazing, dude. amazing because we are still doing this. So um, talk about the reunion that you guys did because you came back in like 2004 actually and did a couple of festivals. Bang your head, I believe, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Talk about that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, people started contacting me um, uh, through, you know, the, the power of the internet now. And then so people started hitting me up like, you know, where are they now sort of bands. And you know, that first Rough Ends album made a pretty – Sure. Know, cult impression throughout Europe, you Definitely. know. Definitely. So um, it was so Europe. If yeah. you listen to it, yeah. that record is like yeah. German. Yeah. That's got man. I mean, you'd have unsung heroes over there, yeah, bro. Man, yeah. So Germany, wrong it, side of the pond, Craig. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, the album did 
Germany did real well in Germany. You know, of course ha- it Holland, did. Um, they you know, love Belgium, that shit. Belgium, you know what stuff what I mean? like that. Power metal. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so people started kind of uh, contacting me um, through magazines. Started doing some interviews again, all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, you know, why do they care? You know, but apparently they did. They do. And they so, still care. Yeah. And so, uh, um, Horst puts on the Banger Head Festival. Yeah. And so um, he contacted me and. Um, wanted us to do the 2004 and wanted us to do the club date the uh the night before and the band had never played europe man back in the day you know really? we came pretty close we were getting you know lawyers trying to get some tour support from steam hammer and some you stuff. had to have it back in yeah the day. we didn't have any money and she was you know she, you know she didn't have much money right so uh um, but yeah, it just, we couldn't really, we were on the edge of making it happen. It just didn't happen. So it was always a bummer. So, so we go over there, 2004, we play the, the night before the uh, festival and it's, um, uh, uh, Death Angel, uh, Ruffians and a couple other bands or whatever. And like, yeah, place, pre-parties, which are huge. Oh dude, the place they're hold, just as packed. The place, 10,000 people the, in the, the pre-party. Yeah. Well, I mean, the place was like held like five or 700 people, but dude, it was like, it was oversold. People were on the wall, on the I ceiling, know, it's man. Unbelievable. So we go in there, we open up with fight for your life. People are just singing all the lyrics, man, to, to the whole thing. I'm looking over at the guitar player, Chris, man, like, going, this is crazy, man. And so, uh, and we had done, some um uh we got approached just before the festival by a label uh to do all the reissues so they reissued the album with like uh uh live uh tracks from the yeah, stone a, from uh-huh. 85 right, or something that. and then uh and mark devito did real great packaging man and all this sort of stuff so and he did some vinyl too uh-huh. as well so when we played you know he was ready to sell all the vinyl and the cds sure you know and we sold all the shirts and uh it was amazing man i was blown away dude i didn't know that that we had that sort of a kind of a cult following over there you did know? that spark doing the next you know yeah. writing new songs i mean yeah, that know, always happens that way of course man you know exactly so so we do that and then and uh you know we're we're, we're everybody's coming up to us like let me buy it beers man i've been waiting like you know how long to see you right. and all this sort of stuff and then uh of course there's like a chaperone that we get appointed for yeah, the sure. festival oh yeah yeah and, you have a host they're called <clears throat> hosts yeah you got a host and uh uh yeah uh jürgen chomler mutual friend of ours you know jürgen yeah i know Jurgen. Yeah, yeah great guy talk man. to jürgen all the time yeah yeah, yeah. he's at all the dutch shows he's at, yeah 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 he's... german shows dutch shows he's at all of them so uh yeah he was very instrumental in us getting kind Good. of you know getting out there so he's like uh no nah, man you guys you know you guys are like you know going on like second or third tomorrow he goes it's going to be like you know early so for you guys so so we got it uh you know shuffled back to the hotel no man one more beer you know we'll be fine tomorrow and uh don't realize one o'clock comes real quick one o'clock comes real quick in the yeah. afternoon so when the sun's out it's not yeah, like yeah. playing at night no, it's all different. Dude. yeah we curbed our enthusiasm um, yeah curbed the enthusiasm we we're happy to be there played the festival and played to you know thousands of people it was great man i mean it was it was a real gas and uh and then uh we uh 2004 and 2005 came around the next year and uh some more re-releases and the band went over there and did like 10 shows 10 or 12 shows um in like five or six countries and uh that was great man we played the keep it true festival yeah good good festival and, and, and uh some other stuff and then, of course, it's like, well, you guys, you must do new album. Of Ruffians. course, right, right. And that's the that's the plug, the buzz. <laughs> you must do new album. You, we will sign you to this Happened label. Happened to DDP the same way, right? So we're only going to do one record. It's so yeah. Like, then you uh, go over there and you play in front of dead uh, people, and you get this bug, and everybody's yeah. like, "We should do another album." So we did. We did an album, and. Um, and uh, we were, were we worked like maybe was the lineup the same? Everybody was the same. Yeah, right? it was the same, man. Because we had uh, um, well, Atch, Luke, Dan, it was, and yeah, Rich, me, right? Atch, yeah, no, Dan Moore though. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Dan so wasn't Dan, on this, Dan, was he? Dan Moore. When we got back together, it wasn't Dan Moore on bass because he was uh, he wasn't able to do the shows. He had health issues, man. Uh-huh. So um, I called Eric Wong from um, Yo, laughing from Dead. Laughing Dead, Piranha. Piranha? Yeah. Um, all right, so. And uh, so Eric had tried out when Dan Moore left the band. We're looking for a new bass player. Um, uh, well, actually, it was in between some point where Dan was in the band and we had another bass player. Dan ended up being back in the band, but Eric Wong wanted to play bass, and so it just didn't work out that he he didn't you know come in the band. And so um, and uh, so I said, well, man, you know what? We're going to go to Europe. 
I'm calling Eric Wong. So I called him up. I said, hey, Eric, man, we're going to go do a couple shows in uh, uh, Europe. We're going to do this like big festival. I go, you want to play bass? He goes, yeah, man, sounds great. I go, All right, okay, cool, man. I'll talk to you later. Hung up. <laughs> it was as easy as that. He was in the band. Well, awesome. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so, uh, so he played on the record then as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Well, actually, um, another guy did. We'll get to that. So uh, 2004, yeah, reunion. 2005, more tour dates, and it's mostly original band. Me, Luke, Chris, and uh, and uh, Eric Wong. And then um, uh, we had this guy, Tommy Cisco playing with us uh, for a while. Um, that was in 2005 tour, uh -huh. actually. And Tommy played in a band with Carl Albert for a little while called Villain. I remember Villain. Yeah, they had an EP out. I remember and, Villain. Um, and Tommy played in Vicious Rumors later. So it was only natural, like, you know, to, you know, same sort of thing. So Tommy came and he did that tour. And then when we did the album uh, in 2006, uh, Tommy played bass on it. And Eric was busy with his band and just at the time. Right. I remember. And just. so, and, um, then when it came time to, uh, the tour for the album in 2006, went to Europe, did a bunch of dates. Uh, Eric Wong came back oh, in. He did he, yeah. He did the tour. Yeah. Why did you not use him? Why did uh, you not use Tommy? Uh, because it was just, he was too saturated with unjust. And, and I said, man, Eric, man, we're doing the album. Don't you want to play on the album? He no, goes, I mean on the tour. How come he didn't uh, play uh, on the Oh, uh, 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 Tommy didn't play on the tour. He had other stuff going on. It just kind of didn't, wasn't feeling it. And it just, you know, and it was, it, it all worked out, man. Everything was real amicable. It was all just fine. Everybody just had different things, different things going on in their life. And so, yeah, Eric Wong did that. And so then, yeah, it was 2006. We did a few other shows here and there. Um, went back to Europe played a few more festivals and then that was it man i mean i couldn't believe the band was even back together let alone like doing all this sort of stuff so i felt totally blessed and uh it was like a whole another chapter for ruffians and it was great so, now the question think about doing it again with those guys to try not not saying to do a record just get back together and do a gig or maybe go because i mean when you're gone for such an amount of time, you can create, recreate yourself on those festivals. They'll have you back. You know sure, what I mean? Sure, have you, yeah. you haven't been around for 10 years, 15 years. You can go back. Have you <clears> thought about doing it? I mean, we're going to get into your cover band in a minute yeah, because well, that's, the, yeah. that's the shit. That band deserves to be on the main stage and in those fucking festivals, but... Uh, uh, I'm just but saying. yeah, with ruffians, man, you know, I chances are probably slim, slim dude. Enough, I huh? mean, um, we didn't have, we didn't keep putting out any product. You know, we did that. We got back together, did the full length album, toured all sort of stuff. We didn't do another album, you know. And and, and if we would have done another album, then you know there probably would have been more shows and stuff like that. I'm not saying you know. You never say never. Not in this. I know, I, yeah, exactly because I'm, was, I'm on my third stint with Exodus. I know. Okay, so don't ever <laughs> never say never. <laughs> When you're a three-time loser, baby, you never uh, say never. You dude, know what dude, I mean? Dude, so, third time's a charm, bro. I, that, well, that's what I said. Exactly, exactly. That's what I told Tom Hunting when I came back. It's been over five years now. Yeah. Back in I told time Tom, flies, I you, man. I go, well, it's a good thing. I go, because this is your third stint and mine, so three times a charm. And you guys man. are better than ever. Yeah, I think that's well. Yeah. Clean air now. Yeah. The air's cleaner to breathe. Sure. You know the... The air is a lot cleaner to breathe. You know, it takes age sometimes to get I there, guess it dude. Does. But hey, you didn't say you didn't have fun along the way. No, we didn't. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's going to happen. But like okay. I said, never say never. We'll see. But that's okay because what we're going to talk about now is the most badass '70s hard rock cover band I've ever seen ever, and they are the Butlers. And I obviously Mike Butler is the bass player, but is that? Talk about how that started. 